let's talk about the Grant Thornton video interview. What's up guys, it's Mike from Jobbity English, here to help you get hired. Today we're going to be talking about the professional services company Grant Thornton and how you can pass their video interview. If you want to know more about how to pass their video interview, get the research note which I'm going to be reading from which includes five fast facts, most common questions, other questions, sources and also a heap of sample answers, templates and a couple of video courses then make sure you check out the Pass the Interview Pack down in the description below. Let's get started. So all of our information comes from research from publicly available sources from the past six months and we're going to go through what's their recruitment process, what are the most common interview questions that we found in the interview as reported by candidates and a couple of other questions that we found interesting which we're going to answer in our rapid fire round. So let's get started. In Grant Thornton's recruitment process, it was reported that an SJT test is the first step in the process. Then there will be a video interview which is going to have six different questions. You're going to have two minutes to answer and 30 seconds to prepare. And should you be successful, then you'll be invited to take part in an assessment centre. So we've got eight most common questions to run through with you. So these are the questions that candidates reported being asked multiple times from different positions, different months, over the space of the past six months. Question number one, why Grant Thornton? So if you want an in-depth answer to this question, check out the link in the card upstairs. So whenever we're thinking about why we want to work for a company, we want to pick up five or six key facts Make sure that they're unique, they're specific, they could be about their finances, it could be about corporate social responsibility projects, gender diversity, whatever it may be, make sure it's specific. How do we know if it's specific? Can't be said about any other company. And if you can, try to personalise one or two of them, so say not just the facts themselves, but what does this mean to you and why is it important? Question number two, how will you manage a conflict between you and your colleague? Conflict resolution questions are really common. There's a lot of behavioural questions or competency questions which are asked in Grant Thornton's video interview. Now, how do we answer these? We use the STAR format, situation, task, action, result, where basically something happened, what was the task that we had to do, what were the actions that we took, which demonstrate that we're really good at resolving that skill, and what was the result that we can show to show that we successfully resolved that. So whenever we're talking about conflict, we want to break this down really simply. Conflict is basically a disagreement. Two people want to do things in a different way. Four people, two people, two people. Okay, cool. So they want to do something in a different way. It could be you had an angry customer. This is quite relevant if you've had a service job. Particularly if you were in the food industry, you'll know that hungry people can be when they're hungry and very demanding. With this, first of all, what's important? Well, listen to what the problem is. Let that person calm down. If you can deal with them one-to-one, -one, all the better. Sometimes trying to resolve a conflict amongst people can actually be quite shaming, and that person could become even more angry and even more upset because they feel like they're being shamed or they're being undermined. And then we try and move towards a solution, we communicate that solution, and the result being, we found your solution, we remade your food order, we have ordered you a new product, we've given you a refund, whatever that may be. Question number three, tell me about a time when you overcame a challenge in your previous job. How did you go about it? So of course, the question on some of your mind will be, what if I haven't had a previous job? Just use an extracurricular activity, it could be volunteering, it could be something from your academics, Whatever it is, it doesn't have to be about the job. Now, overcoming a challenge, for me, again, we're going to use STAR, but it should be something that's quite significant, rather than, uh, oh, I'm working at Starbucks and we ran out of milk, so I went out to get some more milk. And probably there should be two or three moving parts. Remember that we you know, only have two minutes to answer this question, but the challenge could be something like, we were understaffed at work, we had an additional caseload to deal with, we had multiple people in when we only expected one for a particular order, whatever it may be. And really importantly in the action, overcoming the challenge. So overcoming any problem is, what is the problem? Do I have the resources that I need? Do I need to seek external help? And can I move towards a solution? Question number four, why this role? So when answering this question, remember, if you want an in-depth answer to this question, check out the card 
up in the top right hand corner. So why this role? We really split this into two parts and you can get all of this from your job description. Now if the job description isn't very helpful for Grant Thornton, say for example you're applying to be an auditor, then just look up auditor job description and find it from a different company. But for most roles that are commonly applicable or people are applying to, I would say that you would find this from prospects.ac.uk. And the way that you want to split this into two parts is basically what would you do and what are the skills that you need. So what would you do would be, well, I would do these things on a day-to-day -day basis. These would be my daily tasks. This would be my nine to five. This is what I'd be expected to do. This gives the interviewer the clear knowledge that you actually know what is the job that you're applying for and you know how to do it. But the second part of it, which is going to be the key skills, is maybe three or four things that you've picked out from the job description and you can kind of think, well, these are the skills that I need. I need to be good at Excel, I need to be good at teamwork, I need to be good at leadership. And giving a very brief example which demonstrates that skill. Question number five, what's a problem you have overcome when working in a team setting? So I find that this to be quite similar to question three, but it could be a chance when you struggle with project work, a chance when you're working with other people in a service role. Just probably this is a group problem rather than a singular problem. This is a group task that has to be overcome. And then it's also bringing in this idea, not just of overcoming a challenge, but also teamwork itself. Question number six, tell me a time when you worked with a team. Okay, so very similar, working in a team, Ideally, when you're taking your examples from STAR, you want to make sure it comes from work, extracurricular activities and volunteering, and finally from your academics. And as you're kind of breaking this down, uh, what you want to think about is what's really crucial in good teamwork. Well, uh, being able to listen, choosing your task, playing to your strengths, communicating with others, seeking to help, resolving conflict, and so on and so forth. Always remember, every competency question is essentially saying, if it's got teamwork, it's like, well, what are the skills that I need for good teamwork? And if you want a great book to answer this, check out our 28 most common interview questions answered, which is down in the link in the descriptions below for our courses site. Otherwise, just Google it. What are some good teamwork skills? Throw in five or six skills, and that should be really easy for you to do. Question number seven, tell me about yourself and why you are a good fit. So again, if you want a really great answer for introduce yourself or tell me about yourself, check out the card up in the description above. Why are you a good fit? So really you're thinking, do I have the skills? Do I have the experience? And can I tailor this to the job? Is there work experience that I can introduce into my personal introduction? Is there something that I've done into my course where I've learned a particular type of software? Is there something that I've done in terms of my extracurriculars or volunteering or even my academics where I can show that I have the skills, the soft skills that are needed like teamwork, problem solving, result, problem solving, leadership, resilience, commercial awareness. Question number eight, tell me about a time you made a mistake. Now this is an example of a negative question. So what do we mean by this? Well, a negative question is basically asking you to sort of show a weakness, to show that you are a flawed human being. But a time that you made a mistake, so you should have one example where you can answer questions like, what's your biggest weakness? A time that you made a mistake, failed to meet a deadline, and so on and so forth. Now, this is a really good way for you to show what you've learned. Now, everybody makes mistakes. If you made a mistake, for example, you failed a module or you submitted a report at work and it wasn't very good, the crucial part within this question is basically learning what did you learn? What are the things that you put into place to really show that you have learned from your mistake and then saying, well, I submitted a report to my boss and he actually said that I really rushed it, there were multiple mistakes and I hadn't done exactly what he told him. So what I made sure I did next time is that I actually went through all of his feedback. I wrote out a checklist for the things that I had to go through before submitting the report. And when I submitted my next report, my boss really praised me for my attention to detail and that I'd taken on board his feedback. So now I want to deal with four other questions that kind of came up in the uh, other questions section. We actually listed out 10, just in a rapid fire way. How will you work if the time frame is impossible for a given task? Ask for help, double down, see if the deadline can be extended. Tell me about a difficult time you had with a client and how did you resolve it? Very similar to resolving a conflict. What are your strengths and weaknesses? 
pick one strength, one weakness. If you wanna know how to answer what is your biggest weakness, check out the link in the card up above. And biggest success in your current role, this could be academically, professionally, or personally, pick something that you are really proud of not that you think is gonna make you sound good. So something that you actually came home and once you achieved that you got that warm bubbly feeling inside, you thought, wow, that really made me feel quite excellent. I feel like I've really achieved, I've really gone above and beyond what was required. Guys, I hope that you have enjoyed this video. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, I wish you the best of luck. Make sure to hit like on the video, drop us a comment down below, let us know how we did, was this helpful, what are other companies you'd like us to cover. See you later.